community has grown stronger and we all have each other. You, however, will have no one. You will have no one in a cell where you belong for the rest of your life. Thank you, Judge Doro, and we ask that please, he never see the light of day again. Thank you. My name is Sherry Sparks. I am Jackson and Tucker's mom. I stand here today with my son Tucker and my husband Aaron. I'm here today to represent my family, but mostly for my boys, who were both struck down by the red SUV on November 21st. I want to give a voice to our son Jackson Sparks. Our family is forever changed. We are hurt, angry, traumatized, and broken. November 21st was a day that was supposed to be fun and filled with laughter and smiles. Instead, it became a nightmare full of fear, screams, and tears. Put the first one up. My boys were walking in the Waukesha Christmas Parade with their baseball teammates, friends, and coaches. It was a chilly and windy day that day, so we all layered up and prepared to kickstart our holiday season. We met up with our Blazers group, decorated the truck, prepared the buckets of candy and flyers for the boys, took some group photos, and then I left to go find my seat near the end of the parade route and wait for our group while enjoying the parade. I had no idea then the nightmare that was coming my way. Nor did I know that it would be the last time I would hear Jackson's voice and see his smile. I wish I would have known then that the hug he gave me before I went to sit down was the last hug I would ever get from him. I would have held on to him a lot longer. <laughs> After the red SUV flew past us, it was pure chaos. I will never ever forget the horrible sound of the car hitting bodies and the thud of bodies landing on the ground. I immediately grabbed my favorite plaid blanket, ran up the street to find my boys. What I found shook my world. I saw Jackson first in the arms of a police officer. He was running him to get a medical attention. My husband was right behind them and told me that Tucker had been struck also. Pointed me back to the direction where Tucker was. Can you do the second photo, please? That's Tucker underneath my blanket there, the plaid blanket. My world came crashing down at that moment. I wanted to scream. I wanted to throw up and cry. Adrenaline kicked in and I went to find my boy. I spotted Jackson's baseball hat lying in the road first. Then Tucker's hat. Then I found Jackson's shoe, which kind of led me to Tucker. I finally spotted him. He was one of the many bodies lying in the road covered in blankets. I recognized the shoes on his feet. That's how I found him. They're sticking out from under the blanket. I stayed at Tucker's side as he lay in the road waiting for an ambulance to come back for him. He was semi-conscious, but we couldn't move him without a backboard due to his head being injured. They had run out of backboards. Luckily, a nearby shop owner slash hero dragged a door out of her shop to roll him onto so we could get him out of the cold and get him warm. An hour laying out in the cold road where he was thrown from impact. You can go to the next photo, please. This is what we were facing next. Both boys had traumatic head and brain injuries. They both ended up in the ICU at Children's Hospital. Their rooms just a few doors down from one another. The next day, Tucker asked us about Jackson. If he was okay, or was he worse than himself? Do you have any idea how gut-wrenching it is to have to explain your 12-year-old son that his little brother isn't going to make it? His injuries were too extensive for his little body to come back from, and that he won't be coming home with us ever again. Leaving him at the hospital was brutal. 
to see the confusion, frustration, and hurt on his face when he's standing over his little brother in his hospital room, taking in all the machines he was hooked up to. It Tucker remembers everything up until the moment he was hit. He had actually turned around and saw the SUV coming towards them. He said Jackson was right next to him. He said he saw a few people get hit, and then he tried to run out of harm's way. He didn't make it. Being the protective big brother, Tucker blamed himself. He felt he should have tried to grab Jackson or done more to protect his little brother. It broke my heart to hear him saying these things. Tucker's physical injuries were also severe. He still struggles with memory issues and brain processing speed. The mental and emotional damage is severe. Survivor's guilt, PTSD, anxiety, he still gets headaches, his little brother was taken from him. He's suddenly an only child now. He misses his little brother and his playmate. Jackson brought out the silly in him, and life will never be the same without him. You can go to the next photo. Every holiday, special event, family function, vacation, there will always be an empty chair or space where Jackson should be. Jackson's absence is very prominent, Every day we face that vacancy and it triggers sadness and trauma. Jackson's life was taken from him and taken from us. Life isn't the same without him and it never will be. This morning, I should have spent the morning making him breakfast, taking him to school, hearing about his day later. Instead, I'm standing here in this courtroom asking for justice for my boys. We came so close to losing both of them that day. I miss Jackson every second of every single day. I feel gutted and broken. It hurts to breathe sometimes. It hurts to live without him here. My mama's soul aches for him. I am emotionally and mentally exhausted. The pain I carry with me every day feels so heavy. Yet I have to push forward, still be there to help Tucker heal and move forward with find our new normal. Can you go to the next photo, please? As a family of faith, we know this man will face God's judgment someday for his actions. Until then, we feel it is this court's duty and responsibility to all the victims to sentence this man to the maximum penalty allowed under Wisconsin law for each and every guilty charge. We feel this man does not deserve to see freedom in our lifetime, nor our son Tucker's lifetime. We have learned throughout this trial that this man is incapable of empathy or remorse. He has shown no sympathy nor apology for all, the, all of the pain, suffering, and loss of life he has caused to so many. This man not only took Jackson away from our family, he violently ripped Jackson out of our lives. Jackson was only eight years old. Eight. He only had eight years here with us. He was robbed of everything. He will never get to hit a home run, catch frogs with his brother again, Meet his wrestling hero, Braun Strowman. He won't ask a girl to prom. He won't go to college, get married, or have children of his own. Jackson will never be able to do any of these things. These milestones will never happen. He was a bright light in our lives. He was very shy to most people, but those close to him, to his family, he was a big ball of energy. He was charismatic and full of light in life. His life was cut out way too short. Jackson and the other victims deserve justice. We deserve closure in order to heal and find our new normal. We hope to achieve that today. Thank you. And thank you, Prosecution Judge Doro, very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, at this time, Your Honor, we'd like to request a break and bring in the second group. Yes, the court's going to step off as well while you do that. We'll thank take a, about a 10-minute break. Thank you.